If one of the laws of thermodynamics says that the universe is always tending towards increasing disorder, then how can you explain the complex ordering in human beings? Okay, the, um, the argument for thermodynamics is, is a weak argument when you study it. It simply says things run down with time, uh, closed systems run down with time towards disorder, and that's because heat is generated. Now, if you have a system that's not closed, then you can, it, doesn't, it doesn't apply. We have massive amounts of energy coming from the sun, and so the Earth is not a closed system. You have massive amounts of energy coming, and you can have increases in complexity. Uh, again, I, I've mentioned many times, but I would ask you to research this yourself. There's some very nice arguments, some concise arguments. Go to my website, go to the links page, look at creationist arguments. And the law of thermodynamics, it applies really to physics. It doesn't apply, well, it applies to physics, and it is very specific in that things run down over time in a closed system. But we have an open system, for our, in our case, of energy coming in. So it's very easy to see how life can evolve, which it has. And it's kind of silly to say it hasn't when, when it has. We have overwhelming evidence. It's a very weak argument when you already see the fossil record and these other stronger arguments. And by the way, Dr. Hovind makes the point, well, you only need one evidence. Well, the scientific method, you need to look at many evidences, arguments, and weigh them. And you must resolve the conflicts. And if the Earth's old and the universe, which, which is old, then all the creationist argument, all of them are wrong that say that the Earth is... Um, the Earth is young. They're flawed. They're flawed again, as Dr. Hovind likes to say, in their logic. And so the law of thermodynamics, it's a weak argument, and you can research that yourself. Um, and again, on my list of creationist arguments. Okay, you can get the screen up there. The second law of thermodynamics he's referring to states basically numerous different ways it can be stated, but everything tends toward disorder. You leave things alone, they get worse. They don't get better. The Bible teaches that. The heavens are the works of the hands. They perish. They wax old as doth the garment. The left alone, things fall apart. Nothing organizes itself. There's Sue at 20. There she is at 90. <laughs> and there she is at 3,000. Okay? Uh, the second law states, basically, everything collapses, breaks down, wears out, deteriorates. It's falling apart. Okay? Now, his argument that the second law can be overcome by adding energy is absolutely fatally flawed. He'll say the Earth is an open system, which is what he just said. It receives energy from the sun. Well, the universe is a closed system, number one. Okay, So there's no new energy being added by definition. Secondly, adding energy is destructive, unless there's something to use the energy. See, the Japanese added a whole bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor. The anniversary of that's coming up in a couple days. They didn't organize nothing for us. A couple years later, we returned the favor and added energy to a few of their cities and didn't organize a thing. See, adding energy to overcome the second law is ludicrous. They'll say, well, you can walk into a room and straighten it up. Yeah, I know, but now you've got, you've got intelligence involved. What he wants to do is add just raw energy and think that's somehow going to do it. That's simply flawed logic. Okay? The sun adds energy to your house, but it's going to destroy the roof on your house. The sun's energy will destroy your entire house. If you don't keep fixing things, it's going to completely crumble to dust, okay? The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car, not build it. It'll destroy the paint job on your car. There's only one thing that can actually use the sun's energy. That's chlorophyll. And each little plant cell is more complex than a space shuttle. So to say adding energy to a primitive earth is going to create life on earth is just ludicrous. Not going to happen. It has to be a designer involved. Thank you. Would you like to extend the time? Uh, yes, I'd like to extend Two minutes. No, again, it's, it's a law of physics and applied to evolution. It, it just doesn't hold. And as far as a closed system, yes, the universe is closed and it is running down. Eventually all the stars will burn out and all life will die. But the universe is so vast uh, that while it's running down, you can have complexity. And you, have, you can think of hot and cold. And it's the same as when your car is running or your refrigerator, which is also a heat engine. You have, you have heat flowing from um, hot to cold and you have from one area to the other and while it's flowing you can do work. When everything becomes the same, which is a very high increase of entropy, then, then you can't. But the universe is running down, stars will burn out, but in the meantime, yes, you can have life. 
And again, that's the consensus of science. It's what we observe. And it's a weak, ar it's weak argument to say, well, it can't happen when it already has happened and when, when the physics and the science support the contrary. It's a weak argument for um, creation. And again, I would encourage you to um, study that yourself. So that, that is not a valid point as far as uh, creationism. Um, I think I'll start... How much time do I have? Uh, about a minute and a half. I have a minute and a half left? Okay. I'm sorry, 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> it sounded like it was going backwards. Um, at any rate, can I have a half minute more in my closing? Can we do that instead? Okay. When we get I'll there, we'll talk about the closing. Go ahead. Are you oh, stopping okay. now? Okay, Dr. Hovind, two minutes. Okay. Uh, yes, you keep saying it's a weak argument to say these things because, after all, we're here, so that proves evolution. Well, duh. <laughs> we're here, so that proves Martians put us here, you know? We're here, so that proves we all fell out of a tree. I mean, we're here. I mean, that's not proof of anything, okay? Certainly the fact that we're here doesn't prove evolution. I mean, honestly, come on, think about that one more time. Uh, uh, you said the second law doesn't apply to biology. That is an amazing statement. Uh, I'd like to see how the second law doesn't apply to biology. You still have to have intelligence. I mean, for a baby to grow from, you know, seven or eight pounds to 200 pounds adult, it takes a lot of input of food, and it's not just, not just anything. You don't just pour sand and water in there. It has to be a complex designed food, and it has to be used by an extremely complex digestive system, and it's all following a complex code called DNA. This is all a matter of intelligence. This is, these things don't happen automatically. It's true, you can put gasoline in your, in your car and drive down the street and get a very complex machine to work by putting in fuel. Put the fuel in the front seat and toss in a match, see if it does the same thing, okay? You have to have a complex mechanism to use the energy in the gasoline, called a drivetrain, an ignition system, and all kinds of other things. To say that the sun can shine on the earth and turn a rock to a human in 4.6 billion years is ludicrous. Now, if you want to believe that, that's perfectly fine. I don't care what you believe, okay? But don't call it science. And don't make me pay to teach all the kids that in school. That's one of the dumbest religions in the history of the world, and that ought to be taught in private schools at private expense to parents who want their kids to learn that. It shouldn't be forced down the, kid, down the throats of every single kid. But that has to go there. And as far as the refrigerator being an example of violating the second laws, man, oh man, refrigerator's like 30% efficient if you're lucky, okay? If you have a really high-tech refrigerator, you might be getting 30% efficiency. It's wasted to heat. That's still an example of the second law of thermodynamics. Thank you. All right. For the closing statement, I had two minutes down each. We're going to go ahead and do three for each of you, and we will go in reverse order of the opening statement. So, Mr. Callahan, go ahead, and you have three minutes. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to say again, just very briefly on the second law of thermodynamics. All it says is when you do work, no, no um, machine is 100% efficient. That's why you can't have a perpetual motion machine. It simply says that there's going to be some heat generated in the work. That's all it says. And it says over time, you're going to have that wear down. You're going to have more and more heat. And so the universe is closed. Eventually, it will become uniform in heat. But while there is the possibility of energy, of, of energy flowing from one to another, from one area to another, you can have uh, complexity. 